Let's get good. This is Endless Space 2, and we are playing as the Virtual Worshipping Saints, the Vidyani. Uh, thanks again for some more clarification, you double bullfrog. It does appear that the notification about building wonders is a little misleading. It just means that they've unlocked the technology to build the wonders. It doesn't even necessarily mean they're building it yet. However, I was thinking about what we want to do this episode, and you notice we've got this blockade problem, right? We're being blockaded in a system. So what I want to do here is take a look at all of our trade routes. It doesn't look like any of them actually run through Lumeris space anymore, which is good because I was under the impression they do. Although it would be nice to have one in Bracia. In fact, let's take a look at that. If we can build a trade subsidiary in Bracia, we're absolutely gonna do that. Is that a thing? It is, okay. So that's important to note, too, for a couple of other reasons. Wow, we have a ton of other dust improvements we can build here in Bracia, which is fine. That's what we want. We want to be building dust improvements everywhere, but I think we were doing holy proliferations here, and that's why we don't have any of that stuff yet. Uh, do we have system upgrades available here? Because if we do, we should use them, and if we don't, that's fine. It looks like we've done all of those. Now we've got pop going there. Uh, so we'll probably have somewhere else we need to put pop in as well, but... The point still remains that what we want to do here is start to clean up our trade routes. And the way we're going to do that is first by reaching out to the Lumeris. Sometimes it's hard to tell your friends from your enemies, isn't it? Yes, but you know what? We're your friends. We would like to make peace with you, with whatever terms that requires, so that we can safely travel through your space. We'll also give you all of the agreements. Literally all of them. We don't care. Give you everything and a bag of chips. There you go. Make an offer. Hopefully they accept that. That'll give us peace with the Lumeris, which will open up some more trade routes for us. Now the reason I'm doing that is because if we're at peace with them, we can take the military force that we have that's just been kind of running about, and we can turn them into a trade route protection force. And that's the idea. We want to figure out exactly where blockades are happening, and we want to eliminate them. Now, in order to do that, we just need to take a look at what systems actually contain blockades. And I believe currently it's just Junder, but I'm not sure. Not 100% on that. It does look like we're getting blockaded somewhere along that route, and I'm guessing that it's Junder. Let's go ahead and move this fleet over there. They'll be there in a turn. We can also try moving these guys. They may have a little more movement. They do. Okay, so now they're in Junder. The question is, does this blockade stuff... Na no, this can't be blockading stuff naturally. There has to be an actual blockade that's blocking this off. Uh, let's send these guys over to NGC. That's another non-controlled system that could be containing blockades. I wonder if it's possible for the pirates themselves to get stealth... Uh, that seems unlikely, but also possible. Could they be potentially blockading using stealth? That would be kind of annoying if that's the case. Hmm. Okay, well, we don't know for sure. What we do know is that we have a ton of forces that are just hanging out in different systems that can be repurposed and used as blockade breakers. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to use them to protect our blockades, which should open up a lot more dust from trading. It also occurs to me that anybody that we are not at war with, we should have trade agreements with. Okay, you guys are fine. One word for Look, stabbing each other. we have many words for trade us for money, homie. Yes? Yes? No. Okay, that doesn't make you happy. I bet you it would make you happy if we gave you some technologies. Sure, I don't even care which technologies. You can have the top three. Huh? Huh? Oh, we're even. How about one more? How about one more? What are we giving you? Yeah, that makes you happy. How about that? Uh, okay, blockaded routes on Phaeton. So we do have a trade system with them now. And it does tell us what system the blockade is on. So Phaeton is a Sophon system that is being blockaded by the Lumeris who are invading the Sophons. I wonder if there's a way for us to broker peace between two other nations. I mean, in theory, we could create an alliance with the Lumeris and broker peace that way, but I don't think that's going to happen. So, okay. Phaeton's a problem. 
It does interrupt our trade routes. There's not a whole lot we can do about it. You would think they'd be smart enough to like route around it up through here, but we also don't have a trade route with the Sophons yet, which is something we can look at. You. Okay, we have to wait until our truce with them wears off to go to peace and trade with them, which is fine. That's something we're okay with. Trade route blocked on Lekim. Uh, why is the trade route blocked on Lekim? I don't understand that. Blockade on Lekim. There's nothing here. There's absolute. well, launch some stealth things, no? There's still nothing here. I don't know why our trade route is blockaded there. Uh, we'll take a look next turn to see if that blockade there falls off. It probably will. I would imagine that maybe there was something there blockading earlier this turn, and now there's not. The idea here, though, is that we should have enough. Did we not spend Pi's level? We didn't. There you go, Pi. There's a level for you, buddy. We like Pi. Pi's awesome. Uh, Varb St. Zuyena. This is our main general, I believe. Yes, it is. He's got pretty much all of his general skills now. Not really a whole lot left. And by not a whole lot left, I mean, I don't think that there's anything left for him that just affects... Yeah, there's not. Uh, there is Infallible Authority, which has a Senate effect, so we'll take that. That's fine. Get rid of him. Vodiani population in some places has grown. Dimitri Lenko has gained a level. Uh, Dimitri, I don't think you have anything left that is particularly system-oriented. I guess that is. There you go. There you go, buddy. You do that. You got this, Dimitri. Uh, Burra Tech Seeker has a level up. We could go here. We could also go Dust Cost Reduction. That makes more sense. All the things are being built everywhere. We're going to go check our system uh, screen for all that stuff. That's a better way to manage that anyway. Interspecies Cooperative is being researched now, which is plus 10% dust per major or friendly major faction, which is another reason for us to make peace with everybody. And then Careful Sweeping has been finished, which we've begun building the improvement from in a lot of our systems already. But we'll be doing it in more of them, of course. Um, all right. Holy Proliferation here is a necessity. We're not waiting six turns. That's just not a thing. Uh, we can do it here as well to speed this up. Totally fine with that. And here as well to speed this up. Uh, that's going to go before the modernization, please. Okay. So now that we've got Holy Proliferation going in all of our systems with population needs, I was trying to sort them by, like, who still grows population, but apparently that's not how that works. It sorts by the number of pop instead, which isn't as helpful for us right now. Uh, anyways, in the meantime, what we can do here is... Let's sort by dust and go make sure that we have improvements like careful sweeping, which we do have plenty of resources to build pretty much everywhere. Uh, okay, so careful sweeping is there. Careful sweeping is also there. And here. And here. And not here? Oh, it's already in queue here, duh. We're, we're looping. There we go. Right here. Do we have enough to build the Muxba? We do. Build the Muxba too. Uh, so essentially, we are trading off on the massive dust generation of emergency labor protocols. Or, that's not emergency labor protocols, it's emergency labor policy? Policy. Uh, we're trading that to build some careful sweepers pretty much everywhere. Zihun Cartel is an option. Why is careful sweepers not an option here? Oh, because we burned through all of it. Okay, well that's a thing. We do have 191k here as well. I wonder how much it costs to just... Well, there's no reason in rushing those, because they're just done. Uh, what we can rush, though, and this is actually a very sensible thing, is improvements on these systems right here, and that's what we're going to do. We can either dump that dust into improving those systems, we could dump that dust into improving our trade companies here. Not sure how much that's going to necessarily be worth it, though. No, I mean, it could be. It could be. I don't know that we're getting as much straight throughput there as we are when we improve a system, though. So instead, we're going to go improve systems. Whoa, this one just has nothing. <laughs> That's not a good sign. You never want the system building absolutely nothing. Um, okay. Do you need system improvements? Is that your problem? You could use a system improvement level 4. That would require us to have nothing. You can just build that, so we'll put that in queue. Uh, what else? We look at our trade values for our systems and it's important when you're looking at trade values and stuff to look at like consistent trade values like who is consistently making us that money 
Now, Singh is a wonderful example. Singh is consistently making us that money. Uh, so we could, in theory, build some stuff there. The reason I'm looking at that is because if we had more consistent systems, like right now we are losing trade value on systems like Yetix, uh, systems like Hydrus even are using or losing some trade value. And that's because we keep getting blockaded, right? Every time those blockades come in, we lose money. So that's why we want to start camping out and preventing the blockades, which is fine. That's easy enough to do. Like right here, we can just go... Okay, now nobody will be blockading anything via Yetix. It's kind of weird because we are spending a little bit of dust upkeeping this fleet. In fact, I wonder if we can see exactly how much. This is the first unyielding crusade. So let's sort, look for the first unyielding crusade here. That's, wait, that's on Singh. We have two first unyielding crusades. Okay, the one on Yetix is costing us 240 dust to maintain. The thing is, if the Yetix trade route is working, we should be generating a lot more than 240 dust. We should be generating 1600 dust. Well, that's how much we're generating in that system, I guess. Not so much how much is being traded via that line. Either way, the point is that like we're probably losing more than that. I mean, if we look at our worst trade company over here, it's 152 dust. And that's the brand new one over in Virgo, which we may actually want to upgrade a little bit. Is it Deep Space Holdings? Is that who that is? It is. Okay, so yeah, it's one of our newest trade companies. It's our lowest level one. That's why it's not generating a whole lot. It's also got five blockaded trade routes. That's a problem. So we don't want that. Hmm. Okay, so blockade breaking makes sense for us. Now I'm just debating how we spend our dust, like the best possible expense of our dust here. And I feel like in these systems, it would be things like finishing out our production and also potentially happiness improvements, because right now these systems are not very happy. That has a effect on their food and their, well, I guess that doesn't matter then. If it's food and influence, it's not a big deal. Happiness does not matter in those systems at this moment. So I think instead we just finish out all of their buildings, right? And their dust buildings should be prioritized. So in order for us to finish Xeno Tourism here immediately, it would cost 27k, which is insane. I'm not sure why the buyout is that high. It must be due to dust inflation. Um, that's nuts. Xeno Tourism for 27k. Are you serious? But the good news is we can afford that. We really can. So Xeno Tourism here. What else? Uh, I think that's it. So Xeno Tourism there makes sense. We could also buy both of those. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. We're going to buy out our dust generators in all of those systems. Uh, and then right here we'll do it too. Where are you, Xeno Tourism? Did we already get Xeno Tourism? It's probably in queue already. It is, and we can't afford to buy it out because we already spent all of our dust. Okay, well at least we bought out dust generators in two systems. And that'll be great because as that population sort of multiplies there using proliferation, they will generate even more dust. So we're at 34k right now because we're not using any of our big dust production or any of our big production to dust techs yet. Well, I mean, we are using them, but we're not using them right now. Uh, okay. You guys are probably fine up there. This fleet just got wrecked. Like, that that's the fleet that I whelped on the He Show unnecessarily, which is fine. I mean, it's not a great thing, but it's also not that big of a problem. I wonder what happens if we buy this out. Do we just transform their population into essence? Is that how that works? Uh, due to the sphere of influence of the Yanni Arc, the cost in influence reduces over time. I wonder if we park an Arc there and then do it if we just get the system. Because that's a possibility too. And we could do that. I mean, we have one more available before we even have to deal with the cap. And the cap's not a hard cap anyway. We've talked about that. So, hmm. Choices, choices. Scan that down, would you? More titanium. Lovely. We can sell titanium. Oh, did we do that this turn? Did we already go to the market and sell things? Oh, uh, we did not. We did not, looking at our resources. So let's do that. Let's see... I mean, let's just sell 146 here. Let's sell 231 here. That's fine. All fine. How much are we generating here? Turn 29, so we'll just sell 29 there. Uh, what's crazy is we could actually sell Quadrinix at the rate we seem to be generating it, but I'm not going to because we'll end up using that. Luxury resources, we'll just sell whatever we're not using. So these can go, this can go, this can go. Perfect. 
uh, 155k dust. So now we can actually go finish the dust improvements here on Girad as well. Yes, yes, lovely. And we have 66k left, and I think we'll take that 66k and dump it into Deep Space Holdings. There. Okay. Fleets or hovering systems not necessarily accomplishing much. We'll see where the blockade notices come up this turn, though. And I wonder if us doing things like putting out our own uh, guard actions here will actually cause blockades, too. That's a, a thing I'm curious about. I doubt it. Like, it doesn't make sense for that to be the case, but you never know. You really don't. Oh, we were going to blow up Primus, but now the Riftborn are trying to colonize here. However... However, I do want to point out that the Riftborn completely screwed us on that system, so we could still blow up Primus if we want to. Um, we should also be doing one other thing, and that is we have access to one more Behemoth now, and we were going to use that to make a Essence Gathering Behemoth, but I don't think that's really necessary or beneficial at this point. I think it's much more beneficial for us to just do an Econ Behemoth here. Yeah, we just do an Econ Behemoth and we stack it on the home system. So we'll put another one of those out right there. Lovely. End our turn. Dust gains are up to 43k right now. 43k? Really? I expected it to be higher than that. I really did. But I mean, the turn's not over yet. The turn's not over yet. Population boost ended. Well, that's part of it. Let's go ahead and bump that up. 48k. Hacking operation was traced. Okay. And we're at Cold War with the Sophons, which means we are at peace with the Sophons. Let's go make yeah. peace. Peace, trade, science, vision, map. Sure. We'll give you everything you want. Just be our friends. Perfect. Okay. Blockaded on Phaeton. All right. We're not inviting you into the labs yet. I don't care if you invite me into the labs. Keep your labs. Blockaded on Phaeton, and I don't know why, like, the trade routes don't seem to want to go around the things that are a problem, but we are blockaded on Phaeton, which is annoying. Uh, Virgo to Elyon is blockaded. There's so many blockaded routes here, and we're losing, like, a thousand dust a turn, and I don't know why we're blockaded. I really don't. On a lot of these routes, I can't tell, unless it's the presence of Junder here. If it's the presence of Junder there, then I think we can deal with that pretty easily. Let's just invade Junder and get rid of him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing this. Let's. Major victory. We're getting rid of Junder to see if that opens up a blockaded route. That may be the entire problem, is that there is a pirate system there. I didn't think that would be a problem, but it could be. That would make some sense, I suppose. Not a lot of sense, but some sense. There is also blockades here in Zaycor and Pleon that we could break up. Let's try doing that, too. Let's get rid of those blockades, see if we can't help our new friends, the Lumeri, to free up their systems just a little bit. So let's go ahead and send out all of them as a fleet, sure. Just making random fleets here and sending them to go clear out blockades. Uh, that is... Potentially a problem. So is Rhea, but I don't think anything travels through. Nothing travels through Zaycor or Rhea, though, so, like, it doesn't make sense that the blockades there would cause an issue. This blockade on Phaeton, that makes sense. Um, and then there is a blockade here on Giazar, Giz but I, I don't think that we would be caught there because we're allied with the Riftborn, right? I don't know. I don't know, guys. These are the things that I'm not 100% on. You know what would be really cool is if you gave us an economic tribute, because we're buddies. And then while we're at it, could you throw in... That's a lot of Decidious Trees. That is a lot of Decidious Trees. We could take those Decidious Trees. Uh, yeah, let's go for that. Throw in 243 Decidious Trees, if you don't mind. Yeah? We get it? Uh, no. They took a huge penalty. Which is fine. Normally I would feel bad about giving them that huge penalty, but considering the way that they did us on that uh, system trade, you deserve it. You deserve it, Riftborn, and you know it. Ruthian Tigian, uh, let's go ahead and do dust reduction. I wonder what our current dust looks like as far as the victory thing goes. Oh, we're there. We're right there. We're on the cusp. Um, okay. 
Woods Fez, what you gonna do for us, buddy? You're gonna reduce your dust costs. Everybody's reducing dust costs this turn, if they can. Essa Volteros, let's do that. Reduce dust costs. Although that might not actually affect him, that might be a governor thing. No, it's on hero too. Oh no, it's on system. This is the one that affects fleet heroes, but that's okay, because it makes fleet heroes cost zero. This is not a fleet hero though, this is a governor, so we're gonna make sure that she costs less while governing. Got some production slots open, Vodiani population growing everywhere. Uh, and then for this, we could go with... I mean, honestly, I think Mega Risk Containment here makes sense. But I don't know what else we could do that really increases dust. There's stuff left that increases production. Well, that's a 10% Fidzy gain, so we'll go with that. Uh, we will handle those from our system screen. That's fine. Neutron Star is now owned. Okay, that's great. Latest political survey is religious. Uh, we do want to go religious pacifist, though. In fact, we're more inclined to lean into pacifist than religious here, and that's for simple reasons. Uh, doing so will allow us... Oof. Okay, so we do now have access, though, to potentially another arc for settling somewhere. So I think what we'll do is we'll put out another Dustmaker arc, and we'll send it over here to Zaycor. And I think now is probably the time, since we're using dust to buy stuff out, we really want to switch these Dustmaker arcs to a new version. And that new version is going to be one that has uh, actual dust generators instead of production generators. We shouldn't really need production generators on any of these systems anymore. We're just going to go straight dust. Is that a tier 4 dust? Oh, it is. And we can probably afford it now. At least for a couple systems. Maybe not all of them, but for a couple. Ooh, okay. Maybe we'll use tier 3 here. Um, we can do a, t a tier 4, but we'll probably do that on our systems that already generate the most dust. Yeah, that seems like a good deal. That seems like a good deal. We'll do a tier 3 here instead. Almost tied 2, almost tied 4, 3 right there. Uh, and technically we should have one meditation module, but we're also at peace with the entire galaxy, so... Maybe that's not a big deal. Right now. Oh, and we do need to... I missed one. We do need to swap that one. Edit latest. Get rid of that. Go back here. And number three. Beautiful. Okay. Upgrade. Upgrade. Uh, are you that type of arc? <clears throat> you are not, but that's okay. We're going to change you from being a combat arc design to being that kind of arc design. And if we go over here, we should just see all of our support slots. There we go. All the dust. Apply the design. Upgrade. Even more dust. Lovely. Uh, and then Wrath, I think, is our biggest generator here. So we'll go to Wrath, and we'll check their design out. And we will edit them to the latest as well, except for the latest for them is going to be Tier 4. The reason for that is because they already generate the most dust, why not have them generate really the most dust? If we can only afford to do one Quadranic system, this is the system it makes sense to do, I think. Yeah. Upgrade, there you go. 50 dust per turn now, and we were already very, very close. Alright, let's see what we can do if we just start selling some extra resources here and then pumping that into maybe trade companies or just to building improvements on our newer systems. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's go trade companies over here. And this system is just not generating much dust income. And I think it's because of the, the frequent blockades. It's crazy that we can't figure out what the source of the blockades is. Like, look at all the blockaded routes. I don't know, like, why is there a blockade here? What? What? What even? Why is there a blockade here? What is that all about? 
Okay, that, that is starting to just make me salty. Like, I, I don't know why we're basically being blockaded in a bunch of places where it doesn't seem like we should be. There's no real rhyme or reason to why that blockade is happening. It's just happening because it is happening. Uh, and yeah, that's a little frustrating. That is just a little bit frustrating. It would be fine with me if I could be like, oh, we're being blockaded because X and then deal with it. But there is nothing like that. It's just... Nope. Let's go ahead and sell some strategics here. Oof, we did burn through a lot of uh, Hyperium. So we'll have to lighten up on that. We can still do Titanium though, so we'll sell a bunch of Titanium. We have interest in purchasing Adamantium, which is cheaper now. That's too much. Okay, let's try 50. Too much. 30. Too much. 20. T forget it. Forget it at that point. <sighs> okay. Let's see how much dust we generate this turn. Oh, it's payback time. It's payback time. Can we not? Fine. Fine. Just because we can. This is what you get. This is what you get for trading us a system and then stealing it back. Ah, uh, that's so peaceful. Look at how serene and perfect that planet is now. God, this is such a gorgeous effect. I, I will not tire of watching this ever again. You guys are gonna get tired of it because from now on, like, all of our series are gonna involve us blowing up planets because that's just the coolest thing ever. Um, yeah, so I... God, this trade route thing is really, really starting to make me angry and I can't for the life of me figure out why these routes are blockaded. Do we have one traveling through Zaycor at all? We do not. I don't see a single blockade along the route, and the systems that it's telling us were blockaded in, quite often, like Lekum was blockaded, and there's nothing there. There's absolutely nothing there. Your guess for why we're blockaded there is as good as mine. I'm like putting out stealth probes at this point just because I'm like, okay, they, there's maybe something there that we're not seeing. I, I don't know. Yeah, I know there's hacking operations left. Of course there's hacking operations left. Let's go to Venny and Turkana here. And end our turn. Uh, let's push Pacifist here pretty hard. Very strong boost to the selected party. Ideal if the chosen party is already well supported. Uh, very strong penalty to the competitors. Whoops, no, no, no. Let's do very strong penalty to the competitors and this. Hopefully keeping pacifist and religious. If we end up in pacifist militarist, I'm gonna be really salty to be honest, because that's that's just silly. I hate when that happens sometimes. Sometimes it's okay, and sometimes it's like, why in the name did this even happen? No, it looks like it's gonna be fine. We have so many systems. Vote, people, vote. Come on. Pacifist. Yes, yes. There we go. Lovely. Lovely. Weird. Do we... Do our loose arcs that are not actually part of a system get a vote, too? That's kind of cool. I didn't realize that. That's awesome. Awesome. That's just amazing. That's what we wanted. Let's go change our laws around to make even more dust. 57k coming in a turn now. And we have a new trade company subsidiary. <sighs> Blockaded on Zaycor. Show me. Okay, now that makes sense. Let's go break that blockade. We'll use... Take trophies here, because this is a win. So many blockades. Battle at Junder, finish them off. Decisive victory. Okay, Junder is gone. Nervous. What are you up to? <laughs> They're unsure because we're blowing up worlds. Look, guys, look. You just don't like backstab us in a trade and you don't have to worry about it. Yes, murder those at Junder. Okay, thanks. Decisive victory. Alright. Blockaded routes on Rhea. 
So let's take care of that with this fleet. We are clearing every blockade that it tells us about. Every single one. Um, all right, let's go here. Come on, take them out. You can do it. Decisive victory on Rhea. Okay, so Rhea should be clear. Done. Oshi. Okay. Pirates, you're going. We're clearing everybody's pirates for free, guys. This is our pirate cleanup service right here. Okay, you're gone on Oshi. Now, who else is being blockaded? Mizar. Um, can we take another fleet down and wreck Mizar? Probably not. We're probably going to need more action points to sort of finish our cleanup duties, but we'll leave that one up for right now just in case. Zaycor is another one that's having that problem, but we did just clear Zaycor. We did just clear Zaycor, and we don't want to be sieging Zaycor. Hope that's not under siege because of us. Sometimes it's hard to tell your friend. Because we don't want to be sieging. We want peace. Channels, not social media. Look, peace, lady. Peace. Give us the pieces. Come on, we'll give you a bunch of technologies. We don't care. Perfect. Okay, good. A deal, then. So now we should be at peace with pretty much everyone. We are at peace with the whole galaxy. That should clear up a lot of trade routes for us. And everything is still just dotted lines. Literally everything, still just dotted lines. However, look at that, 1400 dust from Deep Space Holdings. Wow, that is a nice gain. We're up to 61k dust per turn. That's just amazing. Let's go in here and start passing pacifist laws like my precious. Make love not peace, or make love not war. <laughs> make love not peace, yeah, that's us guys, that's us. Let's see. Hmm. Here, yeah, I think we go with this. Plus 10% dust per luxury. Now we're generating 65k per turn. How close are we? Are we like end the turn close? We're like two turns close. Uh, unfortunately though, we are out of time, so we'll have to finish this off next time. However, I do think that what we're doing with the trying to clear blockade routes, or blockaded routes, is probably going to help us a lot in our dust generation. We can already see the numbers kind of going up quite a Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Bye!